What's going on, YouTube? How's it going? Uh, it's good to be here once again. Um, be here with you guys on another venture in the day in the life of me. Um, yeah, yeah, boy, Demon King. So uh, today I want to talk about um, the Ascending Flame Project. Now, this project is hosted by the Temple of the Ascending Flame. Their focus is um, bringing in the Draconian current along with the Luciferian current into the practitioner's life. Now, when you participate in their ritual workings, you don't have to be a uh, advanced or adept magician. So basically, the uh, Temple of the Sending Flame um, got together with a bunch of like solitaire um, practitioners and practitioners from all across the, the world, maybe in groups and stuff like that. And they've come together and they decided, hey, um, well, we'll just put together a project where you don't have to worry about grades and pay money and have these secret initiations and all this other stuff. So um, they have several different projects that are out there that you can do. Um, so with me personally, um, I've always had an interest in tapping into the Draconian current. And with my recent um, practices with uh, Demolitry, um, I decided to go ahead and see what they can offer as far as uh, the Luciferian current. Now, um, to hit on a, a few things, um, the workings in this temple are powerful, very, very powerful. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, I did the Ascending Flame project, and it's seven day uh, ritual working um, where you're building upon each day, um, getting yourself more more tied into the current and tapping into that Luciferian uh, side of yourself. And, and unlocking the bits of information and bits of power inside of yourself that you may not have known that was there. Now, um, there's three key things that you do when it comes to the uh, Ascending Flame Project. So I got it here. I'll just be reading bits and pieces from it. Still talking to you guys, but just letting you know what it's mainly about. So each day contains uh, the following set of workings. So you'll concentrate on the key sigil, you'll uh, do the invocation of the ascending flame and the meditation. So um, with, your first, with your first day, um, you go in and you concentrate on the sigil. Um, you know, you, you kind of uh, put that as prescribed through uh, the ritual workings. Um, on a black background in gold. So I did mine as like this. You have to excuse little bits and pieces of red. That's that's the bloodletting that I did for it, which is prescribed um, in order to, to activate the power inside of it. Um, so uh, basically the first day you go through, you do your meditations and stuff like that. You focus on the sigil, get yourself used to that energy and, and that ends day one. <clears throat> Day two, uh, you go back and you you add a little bit more and you start working more on, on building the form and image of Lucifer in your mind, um, keeping along the lines of the whole Luciferian current, uh, along with the Draconian current, excuse me. So um, you're, you're building upon this image, um, you start to draw more of that energy in, into your temple. Uh, uh, Getting it and feeding it a lot more as you're focusing on the key sigil and and, and the meditational work that that they're giving you. Uh, day three, you're you're doing even more. You're transforming yourself into a, the dragon form. Uh, you're starting to to feel what it, what it feels like to be the dragon. Um, you're starting to break through um, the current reality that you think is reality, and you're shattering that. And you're transcending. Um, day four, you're basically um, allowing Lucifer to guide you through uh, through the abyss to to help bring you to the other side. Um, so yeah, yeah, you're basically just going through 
um, flying, flying through, and and basically you're gonna peer peer through with the help and guidance of Lucifer. Uh, day five, you're basically um, working on ascending towards the Luciferian um, throne. So Lucifer's throne. Um, you're focusing on that form, and you're traveling up through through the the astral level through an ascended state to to experience what it's like to be there in the presence of Lucifer um, while he's on his throne or in the area of his throne. Uh, uh, you're traveling through the stars. Um, you're you're basically opening yourself up to the astral energies that are flowing through your temple. Um, and through you. Uh, day six is um, you're basically at the point to where um, you see Lucifer <clears throat> and you're talking to him, and you're communicating with him, and you're asking him to impart his wisdom and whatever knowledge he has to give you because he is, after all, the light bringer. So he has all forms and types of knowledge. Um, that he's willing to give you um, if you're willing to work for it. Uh, and day seven, you can either go through all the meditations uh, from the previous days, adding up and building up to the final day, or you could just meditate on what you've experienced. Um, it's up to you. And also on the final day, you'll have to come up with your in own invocation of, of calling Lucifer into your temple, um, which a lot of, I, I guess a lot of magicians have trouble with, like coming up and being creative and creating their own um, invocations and, and, and uh, workings and stuff like that. Um, I think it's a big part of being a magician that you're able to create your own rituals, your own invocations, your own ends, whatever the case may be. Um, that's just a part of the path, being able to step outside of the norm and to create your own uh, uh, methods and, and workings to add into uh, your personal path. So that's, that's very, very powerful. That's very key. So I'm just gonna talk about my experience during this whole ascending ascending flame project, coming back from my my um, my whole demolitory background, um, I modified the ritual workings a little bit. So instead of just diving in and just calling Lucifer in uh, and and using the invocation there, I I used the invocation. However, I opened the area up by calling in the four kings, making the area a little bit more user-friendly for the demonic, if that makes sense. So instead of me just saying, okay, hey, Lucifer, come on in. Come into this, this place here. Just, you know, don't worry about it. Just come on in. What I did was I kind of opened it up and I let the demonic energy flow first, opening and softening the area for Lucifer's energy to come in and once I did that I mean I did that the, for the first couple of days and then I just kind of like tapered off of calling in the four kings I just kind of focused on Lucifer uh, once I did that the whole entire temple just changed the energy was was high it was rampant and as soon as soon as I did that I could feel the four kings just flow in just flow in and from that point I just focused in on on Lucifer um, now I added my own little implementations. I had my yellow candle, had my my uh, the sigil here that I created. Um, and, and oh, by the way, this is parchment paper that I painted black. Um, painted the gold the gold sigil here, and uh, yeah, just meditated on this and opened that up. Um, so did that. And and basically the first couple of days was getting used to that that energy, getting used to that energy. The third day I said, okay, well it's time to just really dedicate myself to working with you in particular, Lucifer, and seeing and tapping in 
to that energy. So from that point, I just kind of just like tapered off of using the four kings and just focused on Lucifer. And as soon as I did that, the energy was a couple of steps higher because for one, I'm opening the temple and I'm, I'm basically utilizing the same, the, the monetary in for him along with the implication here in the Ascending Project, the Ascending Flame Project. And I'm basically enhancing that tenfold, basically. <clears throat> it was very successful. Um, I had a very intense experience with them. Very, very intense. Um, so uh, it was successful. I, I came back uh, out of my experience with two two particular types of meditation um, that um, I over time I, I, I might reveal them um, I might not uh, one is a, a sun meditation one is a moon meditation so you got your 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 left hand and your right hand type workings there um, very powerful uh, on the the sixth day though the sixth day. <laughs> So here I am. I I go to hang out with a friend, um, and and basically she's aware that I'm I'm like practicing um, demonic magic or any any form of magic. She just knows I'm a magician. Um, I basically spent the night over at her house, and uh, the next day, the day I woke up to the house being full of smoke being full of smoke like something had just like caught on fire and just like just right so uh she gets up she goes downstairs and she comes back up in surprise and she's like you won't believe what just happened <laughs> and i was like what? what what happened what happened so apparently she had this cactus in a plant pot on top of a mantle which is a which was on top of uh, basically above her her fireplace and the fireplace hadn't been on the fireplace hadn't been on she, we had put it out and everything before you know we ended up deciding to go to bed so um basically uh she's like yeah the 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 plant itself was thrown across the room landed on the floor and when it landed on the floor, it melted and it scorched the floor. <laughs> I, I can't make this stuff up, man. Like, <laughs> I was like, what? That makes no sense. So I got up, went downstairs, and no shit, man. No shit. Like, the plant pot itself was fucking melted. Like, gone. And there was a, a scorch mark about that big, about that big, on the freaking floor just like gone <laughs> i was like we both laughed about it and uh i brought it up i was like well good thing you didn't freak out you know uh and just like kick me out of your house <laughs> and she was like no 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 it's cool i'm kind of used to it i was expecting something like this to happen especially hanging around with you <laughs> so we ended up having a good laugh but uh yeah that's kind of like brought in the whole essence of the magical working itself tapping into that that luciferian draconian current very powerful stuff man i recommend it to anybody who's thinking about tapping into you know draconian magic or a different version of luciferian magic uh is is really good stuff very powerful uh yeah definitely get on it definitely get on it uh you will have to contact uh, a Seedith Mason uh, herself in order to get the information. So uh, I'll put the link in the description of the actual site that you can check out and, and uh, read about what the whole uh, Temple of Ascending Flame is about. Um, I like I like their 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 statement. You know, it's, uh, it's tailored towards the solitary practitioner. And you will have to work. You will have to work. There is no easy way of getting around it. You will have to work. So uh, be prepared to, to get into some heavy stuff. Um, once you pass through the Ascending Flame Project, you got to send a report 
within a week of you doing your ritual working. So you got to record everything and you have to send it to them uh, along with your invocation of what you came up with on the seventh day. Once they decide to accept your report, then they'll let you know, like, okay, yeah, you're good. You're now a part of the temple if you decide to take, take you know, take that step. And now you'll be uh, privy to, like, all their their uh, inner workings type stuff. So um, from that point, then you can work a lot of their, their cliffhoffic magic, which is what I'm going to get into later on down the line. I got tons of stuff that I'm working on right now uh, to manifest lots of good stuff in 2015 baby 2015 is gonna be amazing i feel it the energy is like oh my god it's rampant it's high it's high it's high it's high it's gonna be awesome um, i'm glad you guys are here on the journey with me but yeah so definitely um if you're interested hit her up uh i'll put like i said i'll put the description and i'll put the link in the description below now as usual you know i hit, I hit you guys up with books and stuff that i'm currently reading or books that I have read and I've tried some of the workings and and um, and and have good results out of it so there's a couple of books here that I definitely recommend for you guys to, to have a have a look at uh, Goetia. I know I kind of kind of hit on it back in like a couple of videos or whatever but once again as Connolly very this book here is amazing really really amazing um takes you through a whole different aspect of working with the 72 from a demolitor's um perspective or demolitor's perspective um you're not you're not creating your your circles or your triangle arts out of fear you're creating creating it out of respect for the demonic so that it's an easier flow to work with those energies and to bring those energies and manifest those energies into your life. So um, if you're going to be working with any type of uh, old school grimoire type magic, I would say take a spin on it with, with this book here. Definitely get into it. Check it out. It's really, really good stuff. Um, another book by a Asenith Mason is... I got it upside down. <laughs> is the Grimoire Tiamat. So, this grimoire is based off of the first mother, Tiamat, uh, Draconian mother, uh, and, and her 11 children, her 11 demonic uh, uh, children. It goes off of uh, the creation story, and, and uh, it hits on, on basically uh, her origins, her myths, um, you know, talks about, you know... Um, Kingu and Marduk and, and talks about how you can get off into that that gnosis, you know, so uh, it, it, it's it's a it's a branch off of the Enuma Elish um, creation story. So I definitely recommend that uh, it gives you different meditations, um, different different sigils and stuff. And I'll give you guys a peek, I guess, of what's inside. So I'll give you a peek on some of the the actual artwork and stuff like that. So, you know, and you go, Sigil Tiamat, uh, you know, gives you the invocations and stuff, Basmu, you know, and, and just a few others. So, but yeah, as usual, that's that's basically what I'm, I'm getting off into. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys Got something from it. And uh, once again, appreciate you guys being on the journey with me. Leave your comments. Leave your, your recommendations. All that stuff in the in the comments below. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll link up again. And I'll let you know what else I'm getting off into. But until then, uh, yeah, stay blessed. Peace.